And you guys tell me if you relate to it too. If you're anything like me, your schedule can be so tight in the sense that you have routines, you have a level of structure, you have a system in place, you have a schedule, um, you're getting things done, you're performing at a high level, you know, you're knocking things off your to-do list. Watch this. When you're working hard, when you're really working hard, it's safe to say you may have a high level of responsibility. Let's just, let's just lay that down. For the people who have high level responsibilities, or they use a lot of their gifts, they use a lot of their talents, they have so much on their plate. Too much is given, much is required. But here's what I've learned. We always hear that and think, I just about the work, but I'm learning too much is given, much is also required. That has everything to do with also how much rest is required. How much sleep is required, how much much more family time is required, how much more beauty incorporated into your life, into your day, into your schedule is required. How much more taking a break, taking naps, doing things that you love and enjoy, being around the people that you love and enjoy is much more required. Taking care of your body is much more required. Exercising regularly is much more required. There's to whom much is given. There's so much more required on all these other things. And this is what I love about God. He said, listen, the Bible says, God gives rest to those that he loves. In that same passage of scripture, it just talks about how it's vain. You're working so hard. I'm talking about late then to just wake up early again. The Bible says that's vain. God gives rest to those that he loves. That's, there's beauty with God because you're going to need a work ethic to accomplish big things that God will call you to do. But to whom much is given, if you're going to have this huge work ethic and you're going to have all these responsibilities, it's that much more required of you to get your rest, to get around the people you need that can pour back into you to be feeding off the word. I know a lot of people, hear me, it's an easy trap to fall into. You work so hard that you get no time in the presence of God. And it gets challenging because when you're in the beginning of your walk, you know, you're, you're, you have a healthy perspective on the priority is your relationship with Jesus. But as you started Growing in God and taking on responsibility, you forget that the relationship remains first. And everything from that place um, is where you, you may see things like work and organization and you're having to do more. But it's, again, it's that much more required of you for you to get your time in prayer. Too much is given, much is required. But I want to say this. I'm going to go in an interesting, interesting direction with you guys with this one. Let's talk about one of the things that's required, but not a lot of people talk about. Sometimes, change of scenery is really good. Here's what I've learned. Sometimes you just need to get a change of scenery. Although routine is good, Although routine structure and a system in place, a schedule in place is awesome, it's amazing. Structure in place is powerful, makes all the difference. But sometimes, especially when you sense you need it, change of scenery is good. And I'm going to get into some signs you need a change of scenery. 
But when you're looking at the same thing, when you are hearing the same thing, when you are listening to the same stuff, when you're around some of the same stuff for a really long period of time, especially when it's when it's heavy and it's a lot on you, or it's just some of the same old things, it could take a toll on you. It can take a serious toll on you. And what I've learned is that I've been in that position where I, I literally, I was able to just get away. I was able to sense it within myself, Al, it's, it's time. You need to take a step away, get a change in scenery. I felt it throughout my body, my brain, I'm talking about all throughout my body. I just, I can feel the benefits of changing my scenery. It's powerful. This is what I've learned. A lot of people will hear this and make this their excuse to go on a vacation. And I think that's awesome. I'm not mad at vacation. I believe that if you have the money, if you can afford it, or if it's within your context, and you sense that God's definitely put a seal of approval on you going to go on vacation, provision will be there. Take the vacation you need. But watch this. Hear me now. Don't go on vacation with people who will make the vacation hell on earth. I know that's hard to hear. But a lot of people are going to agree with me. There are a lot of best friends. There are a lot of relationships that have been ruined on vacations. I really should probably do a video on the people that you should and should not go on vacation with. Maybe I will. But before we get into that. What I've learned is this, if you're going to change your scenery, remember you're doing it because you're leaving drama behind. You're leaving, you know, sometimes unfruitful, unproductive and draining environments behind. You're trying to get away. What I've learned is this, you could go on vacation and bring all that stuff with you. You can go get a chain, change of scenery to a peaceful place and bring all this stuff, this negative stuff, this draining stuff with you. Don't bring the drama with you to the change of scenery, even if it's a person. But the only person, especially if you're in crisis mode or you're in danger mode or you really, it's your 911 change of scenery vacation. Bring God. That's the one relationship you really need to prioritize. He's the only one that's going to give you peace. And he says, come to me. All of you who are weary, or another translation says, carry all this weight, all this pressure, I'll give you rest. And of course, that's talking about rest for your soul, your mind, and your spirit. But even when it comes to all the responsibilities you carry, God can give you that rest, and he's going to bless you, minister to you, serve you, affirm you, validate you, love on you, and I'm saying enjoy the presence of God while you're taking time away. Enjoy the presence of God while you're on your vacation. Very critical. I've seen so many people just get the change of scenery and wonder why they come back home and things don't change because things may not change around you, but God works something so special where he changes things within you. That's the real blessing when you change because life always going to be life. But when God does a work in you, you the one that you have dominion, you conquer life. Another translation of that scripture about us taking dominion is us becoming masters of this life. And that's because of the work God does within us. It's powerful. And so I'll say this. Um, God. oftentimes operates in the same way where routine is special. He will sanctify, mark, declare holy, or point out a particular place, and that'll be y'all y'all meeting place for a season. Like, oh, you know, I go to my prayer closet, I, I go on my walks, or I do this, or I do that. This was me and God's time, and that's beautiful. But I've learned, even with God, he loves spontaneous, but he also loves the new. 
I read this scripture with the last thing we talked about, but I think it's special. And it's really important. I read this scripture. I read the scripture when we last we were last talking about with the new thing. See? When God sanctifies, or that just simply means when he sets apart. When he sets apart a time, when he sets apart a location, when he sanctifies a new place, when he when he points out this is the new meeting place for us, it's the same thing that applies. Do not remember the former things. I know so many people, when they're walking with God, things grow stale in their relationship. And within them, it makes them feel like they don't want to spend time with God. When in actuality, the language is your, your body is craving, your spirit man is craving something new. That spontaneous, fresh flow. The Bible says, see, he is like a bubbling spring. He is a, a well that never runs dry. This is, this is a, a constant thing. This is a flow. There is, there is a beauty in routine. There's a beauty in, okay, this is the structure you have. But then there's a time where God is very spontaneous and you need to flow. You need to listen to the Holy Spirit where he's leading you to go. Um, and it's beautiful. And we have so I have so many videos on that that you can go watch when you need to switch things up. But I want to say that here for that person that may never go watch that video. Um, and for you guys, if you guys have never seen the video. I was talking about how in a relationship, you know, you guys can go on dates Especially when you get to know each other and it's so special. You know what I'm saying? Like a date is in that beginning stage of meeting somebody is like amazing. It's like, I mean, you guys are so focused on each other. You're enjoying each other. And I'll speak from a young man's perspective. If the young man keeps taking the girl that, you know, he's pursuing or he's trying to be in a relationship with to the same date over and over and over and over again. If she rock with him, you know, it's dope. You know, this is our little date night. But anybody, you know, especially that's in a healthy relationship, is going to desire something new. Doesn't always have to be spontaneous, but it also can be spontaneous, but something new. And if that person ever in the relationship ever communicates their need for something new, that woman isn't saying she doesn't like the guy. It's not saying that she don't even like what they're doing. She's just saying, you know, let's just switch it up. And when you switch it up, you give so much more room for new levels of intimacy, new memories new knowledge and information about the person, how they respond and react in different environments. You see different sides of them as things change and as you switch it up. And it's so beautiful because you only go deeper. If it's healthy, you only grow more in love. And the beautiful thing about getting to know a person, especially when it's healthy and it's, and it's a, the right relationship, the more you know about them, the more you grow with them, the more you fall in love with them. But this is the same thing with God. Most people, when they're walking with God, most people, when they're walking with God, and things in their relationship, it starts to kind of feel stale. You don't realize it, but it's just time to switch it up. Maybe you've been listening to the same songs. Maybe you've been meeting him in the same place where y'all last left off saying the same prayers. Sometimes it just takes for you to switch things up. Maybe you spent time with God here and now it's time to change the scenery. Maybe, maybe t you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go here now. I'm going to spend time with God at this time. I'm going to start to incorporate God in this thing. I, I want to be more authentic in my time in prayer. I want to bring up new things. I want to be more vulnerable with God. I want to actually start listening to God. And I'm going to say that. I'm going to say I'm going to say that on that note. That's really powerful cuz you know what I've learned especially as a man, especially as a man that loves to encourage people with words. What I've learned is most people 
really enjoy being heard. Hear me now. But if you're in a relationship with somebody that does all the talking and you never get a chance to speak, your greatest cry is to simply be heard. Like, like, hey, can I, can I say something? <laughs> and I've learned this is the same thing with God. A lot of people I know talk so much. Like I teased this one small group. I was like, the problem is in the prayer and your time in prayer with God, you're doing all the talking. Did you ever give God time to speak to? Did God ever get an opportunity to speak to you? It's really profound to me. And I just, I just wanted to say, you know, let's switch it up. Let's not let anything in our lives grow still when you sense it's time. And let me just put it out there. Let's go so I can finish the time yet. Let's finish this. Not when you're burnt out, but when you're sensing you're, you're, you're uninspired a lot. You feel jaded. You feel off. You feel complacent. You're tempted to compromise more than ever. Desires and temptations to quit and walk away. Thoughts from the enemy telling you, you know, this isn't working. It's not going to be nothing, especially if God told you to do it. You're starting to get short-tempered and irritated. People working your nerves over the smallest things you're starting to tip over. <laughs> it's serious. It's serious. Unchecked feelings of a unappreciate, feeling unappreciated. You're complaining more than ever. Again, even about the smallest things, it's time you need to switch it up. And you need to get a change of scenery and bring God with you. You need to go get refreshed. Okay? Because you could be even around people you love. And because you're a little under pressure and handling and dealing with many different emotions, when it just, it's just, again, this is for those people who perform at a very, very high level, carrying so much weight, they have so much responsibility and it's time to take a break. All your friends and family are going to love you for taking a break, I promise. 